quite in the feeling to do it because I was just like, when it dropped in my spirit from God, and I was just like, no, nah, you don't want me to do this. This is not what you want me to do. I'm so excited to welcome our guest today, Nakia, who is an author, creative, and cultural advocate. Well, hi, Nakia. Thanks so much for joining us. Hello, April. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm so excited and love to have your great personality on our show. So that's great. Now, before we dive in and, you know, really get into the meat of everything, please get Mm -hmm. us started with a brief introduction, if you don't mind. Yeah, sure. Definitely. My name is Nikia Booker. I am the author of the Black 2020, the Black Artivism Capsule. I'm also a curator. I'm also a creatives created, meaning I'm all about different creatives and art medias of all kinds. I support them in every way. I do a different, different multimedia activities and events and all types of things myself is under the creatives list, if you will. I'm originally from Louisiana. Right now, I am residing in Washington, D.C. For, li- for a limited time only. Okay. <laughs> and, and, to that. and of course, I'm an art enthusiast, music enthusiast, love to travel, and just, you know, love meeting new people and having these different experiences. So, Well, that's, that's great. That's great. <laughs> And we'll dig in a little deeper on all of that as we talk. But I did want to go back to some early days. And I did read that you were first exposed to art through your grandfather. Would you like to talk a little bit about that? My grandfather was a part-time multimedia artist himself. His full-time job, he worked at the post office. So he always have his own personal art displayed around the house. But before even he worked at the post office, he worked at an art gallery. This is way before, of course, I was born. My mom told me these stories about him. And he used to work in an art gallery full time before he got on at the post office. But he always took different things from where he found like, you know, from around the house to out of the yard and just turn them into beautiful works of art. And so that was my first introduction to, you know, to artwork, to multimedia artwork of all kinds. So that's how he inspired me because, you know, I kind of grew up, I was really close to my grandfather. So it's like I grew up with him. So he'll have all these things he'll make for us, my sister and I, and not only us, but like I say, in different things. And he had displayed his art. It was displayed all around the house. I guess the art was in your blood. What kind of memories do you have of just when you saw the art? Did it feel like just every day or did it evoke certain emotions in you when you saw his art? Well, it it did. It made it always made me happy because it was kind of like a surprise because it'll be something new every time. Like I come home, that's <laughs> yeah, I'll something new up somewhere or in the midst of working on something. <laughs> so it was normal, you know what I mean? Like a day to day, it was just like a normal thing. My mom also had me enrolled in the early age. At six years old, like with the Girl Scouts, and I did all these different things because my mom was a social butterfly herself. So I was a ballerina, I was a Girl Scout, and I did all these other different things with different social groups throughout the city. So I was always exposed to art in different ways. You know, everything from going to different ballets to traveling to go to art shows and galleries and stuff like that. So it was like always a field trip. Somewhere, <laughs> some, I, had being like, something new and being exposed to something new. So it was that was normal to me. I didn't even realize until I got older that everybody wasn't raised like that. You know what I mean? To start at an early age to go to an art museum and and go to plays and to shows and to concerts and to you know, like I said, I was to me all that is art. It I was exposed to it in so many di- different types of ways. 
And it was my day to day. It was it wasn't too many times like I was at home watching a whole lot of Saturday cartoons. Well, that was definitely. rare because usually we had somewhere. My mama had me in something somewhere to be some activity <laughs> going on, you know, or what have you. So, yeah, I've been exposed at an early age. And like I say, it was just my it was normal. It was normal being exposed, you know, that young. It's like I wasn't surprised by a whole lot when it came to culture, I guess, if you will, because even in my community, I my grandfather picked me up. After school, and we'll go to an art fair in the city, and they have what they call Red River Revel. We'll see people making jewelry. He'll buy like art and bring it home on a regular basis. Like he uh, take me, and it was this, I never forget my first piece of art outside of my grandfather was at one of these art festivals. It was a guy doing silhouette, and he'll cut out a piece of paper. You will turn your face sideways, and he'll he'll cut your face. Mm-hmm. And he'll frame it for you. And it was my first personal piece of art. And it was of myself. And I thought that was really cool. I kept it for a really long time. So it's just like I said, it was a normal day for me. Did you ever dabble in uh, doing art yourself? I mean, outside of drawing and poetry, no. I was a, and I was a, a music lover as well. So I do like, my 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 grandparents brought me a little wooden. It was a tiny kid's piano, so I was feeling it all the time. And I'd be drawing. To me, it was like typical kid art drawing, like that I do, and I write poetry. It was like an expression for you, where maybe, like you said, some kids might play outside and yeah do basketball or do yeah it was just water. another expression of play for me like when I went okay. outside I'd be inside playing on the piano listening to music drawing writing it was just another expression to a play of me I didn't think I was oh I want to be a gifted poet you know I write stories and stuff but to me that was like when all kids do admit it, it <laughs> Because it was all around you. So right. It was all around me. Because I had other friends that did the same thing. And back, back then, you would have actually have an art class. I actually went to an art class in school. Like, you went to PE in right. Hill. And I learned calligraphy in school. How to oh, curse it. Right? Like, all that stuff is gone now. Uh, it's like over the day. <laughs> you know, in, the, in this day and age. But to me, that was our normal. And then you said you love music. Where did that come from? Or I think my dad and my uncle and my grandfather, because they'll play their records all day. And we were allowed to, like when we got home from school, put on a record and play it. It wasn't just, uh, you know, how some people put on music just to clean the house on Saturday. <laughs> it was every day, all night. My dad had a huge ring that we call the library, full of records. And my uncle kept records as well. When I went on my grandmother's house and my grandparents, they kept a lot of records. And my dad and my grandfather, he had, uh, and I know I don't look this up. Oh, I know I don't look this up. But I remember driving in my grandfather's car in the front seat, and he had an A-train. And he'll, we, he'll let us put it in and flip it over in the whole nine. And between that and that's how I learned how to clean records and take care of them. Because that's the only way we could use them was to, you had to learn how to take care of them and put them on properly. Because, of course, they did not want to, you know, they didn't want to want us to wreck them and ruin them. So, yeah. So that's what the love of the music came from because music was always going in some shape, fashion, or form, you know, in the car, in the house, or whatever. I have, and a, the house I I have hmm. a, um, a little side question to ask related <laughs> to music. If you had a personal theme song, what do you think it would be? Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> well, think about it. If it comes to you later. Yeah, I, yeah, I have to think about me. them. I, I know, and I know. I, I, I have a, a, probably a few. I just need to think of it because you can ask me off the spot. Right, right. <laughs> yes. And just 
getting back to your love of art and creative expression, I know that you wrote a book and it, you never wrote before. This is your first book, but you wrote a whole. Hold on, let me grab it. Yeah, and you I have a whole, a whole book, <laughs> and it's beautiful. It's Thank really you. beautiful. Tell us about that whole experience. So the 2020, the Black Art, Black Artivism Capsule is a Black Art Coffee Table book. And it consists of all types of art. It features everything from poetry to paintings to sculpture. We have a Black Art list of galleries in the back of the book. It was something that dropped in my spirit to do during 2020, during the civil unrest and the pandemic. And it's a co basically a collection of art that imitates life during that time from artists all over the world. This came to me literally. It just dropped down in my spirit during that time. And I never wanted to do a book before because I'm not a writer. And it was very divine. It was a very divine thing. And I went back and forth it for her. <laughs> so were you oh, finding the feeling? Well, I didn't feel to do it because I was just like, when it dropped in my spirit from God, and I was just like, no, nah, you don't want me to do this. This is not what you told me to do. I was we arguing. <laughs> I was going back. <laughs> and I called myself having this bright idea. That I was gonna be like, oh, I could do it, and I get somebody else. <laughs> so you would orchestrate it, you right? I said, oh, that. I get it, and God said, it's not yours to give away. Huh? You doing it? <laughs> so after I look, after I lost the fight, clearly. <laughs> yes, as we see, <laughs> yes, it was. It was very divine. That's the best I can tell you because as I, for every next step, it was, it a drop in my spirit. I was like, okay, what I, you know, like what to do next. And I just, or God would tell me what to do and I do it. And that's how it all came together. My publisher that I used, everybody that came in my life for this book was divine. It wasn't hard, it wasn't hard work per se okay. because everybody was, came to me in a divine way and everybody, and from my publicist down to the editor to my social media person, everybody is uh, was a black person that worked on this book. And I know I did want that once I got it going and started. And I work with artists all over the world. So let me go back and tell you how it started. So once I got the download, look and accept the challenge. <laughs> and I actually got the word. I reached out to artists through IG. And mind you, let me say this. I had just got on Instagram like four months before the pandemic went down. So I was a newbie. And I said, well, I'm an artist enthusiast. So I'm a follow, of course, artists, music people. I love fashion. Fashion, art, and music is my jam. So I started following all those type of people online. So a lot of beautiful artworks started coming out. And I was like, oh, wow, this is dope. This is great. It was a, like a lot of stuff that I saw was actually like uh, joyful type stuff. It's like it, it was a feel good. It wasn't like depression. I didn't catch a whole lot of angry stuff, you know, and things that resonated with me or I felt I, re I reached out to the artist. I sent them the email or DM. Had a conversation on the phone with them. A lot of the artists I talked to literally one-on-one. -on -one. It was very like an old school process. I got on the phone with them. I told them, you know, what I was working on, this project, what my idea was. And it went from there. It went from there. And the ball just started rolling. And, you know, we worked together together. I work with the artists about what type of work was sent over. A lot of the, and a lot of them had things in mind they wanted to see. And so I was like, whatever's on your work to see, what you think should be, you know, what you think represent, this is your art. You know, I kind of gave them like, you tell me, unless it was like a certain piece, I felt spoke to me. So 
that's how I work with each artist one on one. And I work with artists, like I say, I don't know the world, from London to Switzerland. Or no, those type of artists are in this book. So I think it was a very organic process. I think the longest part of it, or the hardest part, I would say, was the distribution company. I had to change distribution companies. That held me back almost eight months because the book would have been out like a little sooner. But I feel like timing is everything. So it, mu- it was in time. I feel like it came out right on time because I was actually done with the book like within a year. But it came out last year. And it came out in 2022. Mind you, I started working on it in 2020. So would you say this was like a creative outlet for you and it kind of filled that need that you had? I wanted to go into more of my passion's work, if that makes sense. Yeah, because my I have a regular nine to five. I call it just my direct deposit. So I'm just like, I ain't doing what I love. I ain't doing what I wanted to do. And I was like, it was time. It was already pulling on me. Like, okay, you need to go into your real life full time. And this was one year, and I feel like this was the way for me to start the journey that I'm on now. Like, okay, this is why I feel like you know God dropped this in my spirit. He's like, look, this is. This is what you need to be doing over here. What's happening now? Have you parlayed this into something else? I did notice that you have, please correct me if I'm wrong, but you have a Spotify playlist associated with the book. So that's yes, correct. No. to your love of music. I noticed that you have like a, a virtual gallery. I don't know if that's something that you're still doing. Talk a little bit about some of the offshoots from the book as well. Yes, definitely. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I have a virtual art gallery that is also, that was released from the book. The virtual art gallery is totally different art that's not in in the book. It's all new artwork in this virtual gallery. I said to my publisher, I say, oh, this is, we need to do, I think it'll be a good idea to do a virtual art gallery. Because, you know, we still wasn't coming together. And I imagine by the time the book was done, we probably still wouldn't be able to come together and do a lot of in-person things or activities. So I say, let's create a virtual art gallery. That's totally different art outside of the book. And people can still experience and get to know the artists and some of their other words. And so that's how they came about. Also, okay, that sounds exciting. <laughs> yeah. And also the, the Spotify list. I was like, they did come from I Love the Music. I say, this book needs a soundtrack. Because... <laughs> I feel like, one, you know, again, back to my love of music. And two, I just kind of felt like this was such a special project. Music, I just kind of feel like you needed to have a soundtrack to go with it because I wanted people to have every type of experience with all their senses as possible. Right. What I'm saying is to give them a full-blown experience because, mind you, we could touch one another. We could see one another. So I was like, let's give them some music so they can feel, so they can, you know, the the virtual gallery, so they can see the book they can see. I want them, you know, if they can touch and feel the book. I want them to have a whole, I want it to be a whole experience. But I really feel like even though it came out of that terrible time, that it's still very current now you could still enjoy the virtual gallery you can still enjoy the yes. music it still goes with the book the book the information in the book is still still a beautiful book and, and i uh, agree everything kind of ties in so even though that was what it came out of this still kind of rises up through that and it's still right it's very current and timeless i agree because i did want it to be in association also as a Black Joy project. I didn't want it to be okay. depressed. Right. I totally agree. It was just created during that time. Correct. Right, right. exactly. That's yeah. why it's called a capsule, because it's timeless. You okay. know, so if somebody dig it up, 
20 years from now, 50 years from now, I think a lot of the artwork will still resonate with people. It's, exactly. it, you know, a lot of right. it will touch you in a great way. I agree. I agree. And that's what, that's where the title comes from too. I mean, the Roman numerals. Correct. That as well. Right. I'd like to ask a little fun questions. Okay. That have nothing to do with anything other than learning a little bit more about you. Okay. <laughs> so what's the best advice you've ever been given? Oh, wow. Probably for my mom. Follow your first mind. Okay. So <laughs> trust your intuition. <laughs> because, you know, when something hits you to do something, do it. Do right. it then. Don't do so you won't. That saves a lot of regret. And you're not going right. to be like, oh, I should have did that when I first thought about it. Oh, I should have. And, and you let it pass. Right. And then you be like, oh, I should have. Right. You, you pay for it later. I think we've all fallen in that trap. So that was very I good advice. It. It's like, I'll leave her. And I remember her saying it, me growing up, she'll be like, how that should follow my first mind when I, when it came to this, this, and this, and that. And from here, her saying it and telling us, she said, always follow your first mind. I like that one. Can I steal it? Yes. It's not patent and pending. It's all yours. Okay. <laughs> It's mine, then. <laughs> it's yours. Yes. Okay, I have another. If you could pick a new skill and, and be good at it in an instant, what would it be? Oh, wow. A new skill. Or it can be even like a talent. That's my favorite. Right. You know what it'll yes. probably be? And with me getting ready for my second, look, for my next journey, right. probably a, a new skill I would love to pick up if I could pick up fast and quick is Speaking foreign languages easily and smoothly. I like that one. <laughs> yeah. I like that one. Okay, let's see. Okay, this is just a quick one. What's okay. your favorite? Sweet, salty, spicy, or sour? Sweet. Okay. <laughs> I'm a sweet girl. I love sweet. <laughs> do you are you do you bake or anything like that? I don't, but I love a good homemade anything. You'll you'll eat other people's good baking, right? Yeah, I love a good homemade, you know, like a good pound cake, sweet potato pie, like good old school wholesome desserts. Right. Like my mom growing up used to make a great lemon meringue pie. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> now you got me thinking about sweets. Feel the dick now you 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 did mention you have a new new kind of life coming, so this question might fit perfectly in that, and it did tie into your previous answer. Okay. But if you could magically become fluent in any language, which one would it be? French. French. Okay. Okay. Do you speak any? <laughs> no. no? <laughs> I should have said <laughs> we we we. we my label that's it oui oui bonjour well they're the apps you can right I on gotta get on it I gotta do better I do now are you planning do you have any big things coming up on the pipeline? my next project I'm working on I'm working on a retreat that I want to launch next year I'm tying up loose ends with that now it's it's actually probably going to end up being, uh, coming to fruition sooner than I, I even I think because that's another thing I was kind of like, oh I do it, you know I'm gonna do it later, kind of kind of right. trying to push it back. But every time I do this, something else come up for it, and I'm adding, and I'm and they just like is really probably eighty percent playing now. Wow! And it wasn't even my do. Like, I mean, it was my doing, but right. I wasn't tr trying to even get even that much done. So I kind of feel like, you know how some stuff is, it me I guess because it's meant to be, that's right. what's going to be neat. It's telling me, because that's how I work with my project. Kind of like what drops in my spirit at that time. And then I just plan from there. Okay, this is what I'm doing. 
And so, so that's usually how it works. So I'm trying to do a retreat for next year, 2025. I'm not, I'm sorry, 2024. I was saying I wanted to be 2025, but look like it's going to show up and be 2024 at the rate I'm going. So tell us, are you able to tell us more about it? Or at this moment, I really. Is there somewhere we can stay in touch? To yes, I was going to have. Okay, so this is what I wanted to do, folks. You guys can go to the, I'm a, when it's time, I will post it on the black artivism dot. Okay. My, well, I ain't going to even worry about the website, but my Instagram page, black okay. artivism. Okay. I will post it, the information on there when it's time. And cause in, I'm in the process now of having my website worked on my okay. new one. This is not going to be black artivism okay. because black artivism is for this book. It was only if it was for this. So I'm going to do other things outside of here. So going forward, that will be on the website that I'm having done now. Now I have a question. Is the retreat uh, art related in any way? or I, You know what? I want to focus it on creatives. Creatives okay. of all different kinds that can, that can focus, that can benefit from it. That's, that's my goal. Not just because I don't want to pigeonhole myself just with art right. so i want to focus on other types of creatives like you know they do different things and let them all creatives be able to benefit from this retreat so that's why i'm trying to make it that more than artists if you will you know no matter what type of artist or creator mm-hmm. that you are you will be able to be- attend and benefit and get something from it and pull something from this retreat so i'm trying to set it up in there for me okay and when you get the information, we can add it to the description of this video in case someone's watching this, you know. Yes, definitely. I appreciate that. Yeah, so definitely. And I'll send you the information as well if you want to put it up on, on your, I don't know if you have an ad space on your website. Not currently, but okay. uh, that's a good idea. <laughs> yeah, for different artists, events or stuff. So, yeah, no, definitely. As soon as it comes together, I'm... I definitely have the information of, like I said, I will be putting it on the Black Artivism page, Instagram page for sure. I post like a little flyer and once I get all the details, so okay. towards the location and so and the, and when I lock down a date. Sounds good. Yeah, I'm excited for that. Yeah, Sounds so like that I'm working on that, and I'm trying to get some other things going. I have a few other things kind of in the works, but it's not. It's it's. You know, it's coming along, I guess, if you will, with a different, I'm doing some other collaboration. So, but like I say, I definitely, you know, have all that information on the Black Artivism Instagram page with a link to going forward to where to find other information to what I'm doing need. And, okay, well, that sounds good. Is there anything else that you'd like to share or? If you want to definitely buy the book and any other, like I say, projects, activities, events that I have coming up, I mm-hmm. definitely, you know, going forward, because I do want this audience to transition with me to, you know, the next pro- every the next things I have going on from projects, events, to retreat, right. to all of the good stuff, to D, all the above. <laughs> okay. <laughs> And then it'll also be in the description. So if for some reason you want okay. to jot it down or whatever, it'll be there as well. Okay, so, perfect. Yeah, we'll we'll get the people to you. Thank you. You're doing some good things. So don't forget to let's see, get it right. Grab your copy of this beautiful book. I just wanted to say thank you so much. I enjoyed thoroughly speaking with you and and getting to know you better. And uh, look forward to all the great things you have coming up. And, you know, like she said, stay on in touch with her. You'll see all the new things she has coming up. And we're really excited for you. So keep up Thank the good you. work. <laughs> Thank you. Thank Bye-bye. you. Bye-bye.